Welcome to another episode about the origin of the Carolina Bays. Today we will examine the hypothesis that the Carolina Bays and Nebraska rainwater basins were made by airbursts or blowouts. This is a persistent myth that cannot explain the elliptical geomorphology and the radial orientation of these geological features toward the Great Lakes. As far back as 1942, Professor Douglas Johnson described the Carolina Bays as oval throughout his book, even in cases where he could have confirmed that the base had a precise elliptical geometry. Professor Johnson justified this by mentioning that it was not uncommon to find blowouts bordered by dunes in areas subjected to wind erosion, and he promoted his idea that the bays were created by artesian springs whose shape was later modified by wind and wave action. A paper published by Professor William Prouty published in 1952 said that multiple and heart-shaped Carolina bays overlap in patterns explained most logically by the impact of tandem meteorites. Professor Prouty proposed a modified meteoritic theory where the air shock wave associated with a meteorite produced a crater many times bigger than the size of the projectile. For his experiments, he fired the rifle at targets covered with plaster of Paris or flour that was blown off by the airbursts associated with the bullets. A paper by Ayton and Parkhurst, published in 1975, proposed a re-evaluation of the extraterrestrial origin of the Carolina Bays. The abstract says, Controversy as to the origin of the Carolina Bays has centered on terrestrial versus extraterrestrial theories. Meteoritic impact has been considered the primary causal mechanism in extraterrestrial models, but alternatives such as comets and asteroids have not been adequately considered. Comets may explode during fall and produce depressions which would conform to the morphology of the base. Only a comet appears to satisfy the constraints imposed both by extraterrestrial requirements and observed terrestrial characteristics. The paper explains that a shallow trajectory and air blast could also account for the apparent piling up of material on the southeast rims of the base. Although a fairly speculative model at present, there is the precedence of the Tunguska Fall. Further support can be found in the orientation of the base. This is another example of a paper that suggests that air blasts could create Carolina Bays and mentions the Tunguska event without demonstrating that elliptical basins were created in Siberia by that event. The 2006 book by Richard Firestone, Alan West, and Simon Warwick Smith said that the best explanation for the overlaps of the Carolina Bays is that they result from the impact of multiple objects. After the first ones landed, others fell on top of them, creating the overlaps. Figure 17.1 shows that the bays overlap in nearly all compass directions, a fact impossible to explain with wind and water theories, which propose that the strong bay-forming winds blew only from either the northwest or the southwest, varying according to the particular version of the theory. Either direction isn't sufficient to explain how the bays could expand backwards for miles against the prevailing winds. Even though Firestone had made a good case for the impact origin of the Carolina Bays in his 2006 book, he reversed his position in a 2009 paper and proposed that the bays were created by powerful winds. He says, nearly 100% of the impact energy from the airburst goes into a high temperature shockwave creating an overpressure of more than 4 pounds per square inch with powerful winds faster than 250 kilometers per hour that would race across the continent creating the impact debris rich Carolina Bays as it passed. The winds from the shockwave are consistent with the orientation of the bays and the theory that they were Eolian in origin according to Kaczorowski 1976. Why did Firestone switch from promoting the impact origin of the Carolina Bays to an Aeolian hypothesis proposed by Kaczorowski? The reason is that he submitted a paper to the peer-reviewed publication Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and the reviewers gave him a hard time because he had not worked out the details of how the Carolina Bays could have been created by impacts. The origin of the Carolina Bays was left out of this publication. This paper was later recognized for introducing the Younger Dreyas impact hypothesis. The report by Raymond Kaczorowski, which was never published in a peer-reviewed journal, starts by saying, The origin of the Carolina Bays has been something of a geological enigma since their existence on the coastal plain was first recognized in 1848. Theories that have been proposed for the origin of the bays are numerous and diverse. Surprisingly, however, most workers seem to have neglected the concept of uniformitarianism in their studies of these remarkable features. Hence, few investigations have been designed to compare or contrast the Carolina Bays with modern analogues in Alaska, Chile, and Texas. Kaczorowski performed an experiment that he describes on pages 92 and 93 of his report. 
The caption of the image says, a diagrammatic representation of Model Lake changes from circular to elliptical, perpendicular to the influence of opposing winds alternating every 15 minutes for a total of 4 hours. Sediment removed from the maximum transport zones, along with sediment derived from nearshore areas, produce a net accretion in the areas where wave approach angle was low. Initial lake diameter was 65 centimeters. The claim by Kaczorowski that the model lake changes from circular to elliptical is false. The resultant shape of the model lake has pointy ends that resemble an American football more than an ellipse. In 2001, Zanner and Kuzila made a presentation at the GSA annual meeting titled Nebraska's Carolina Base, describing the Nebraska rainwater basins. The authors say, our hypothesis is that the basins on the current land surface originally formed as blowouts or low spots in abandoned Platte River fluvial sands and gravels. The approximately 27,000 radiocarbon years in later Lewis actually draped the pre-existing topography formed in these sands. We also offer that these features would be recognized as an analog of the Carolina Base if not for the Lewis cover. This suggests that the Carolina Bays are not unique features and any explanation for their existence should also help explain Nebraska's rainwater basins. This is another example of a scientific report describing the Nebraska rainwater basins as oval and attributing their formation to blowouts or wind action. However, this report brought attention to the northeast to southwest orientation of the basins in Nebraska, which differed from the orientations of the Carolina Bays by almost 90 degrees. This finding made it plausible to consider that the basins had been created from terrestrial material originating from the Great Lakes region rather than from a swarm of meteorites. The Nebraska rainwater basins have elliptical geometry that can be confirmed by fitting ellipses to the perimeter of the basins by the least squares method. The major axes of the Nebraska basins are oriented from the northeast to the southwest. I have placed on github.com the Python programs to fit ellipses by the least squares method to the Carolina Bays and other geological features. There is a link to the software in the description of the video below. Any question of whether a feature is elliptical or oval can be settled by using this program. The Glacier Ice Impact Hypothesis, published in 2017, proposes that an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet by the Great Lakes ejected pieces of ice in ballistic trajectories. The secondary impacts of the glacier ice boulders liquefy the ground and produce inclined conical cavities with raised rims that were transformed into shallow elliptical basins by viscous relaxation. A high-speed impact on an ice sheet sends a shockwave that fractures the ice, and the ice pieces are ejected in ballistic trajectories from the impact point. Well-preserved Carolina Bays have elliptical geometry typical of oblique impacts, and they have raised rims that are characteristic of impact cratering. The bays are found only on unconsolidated ground that could be liquefied by the ice boulder impacts, and they are oriented from the northwest to the southeast. Extensions of the major axis of the Nebraska rainwater basins and the Carolina Bays converge by the Great Lakes. The bays occur within 1,500 kilometers from the Great Lakes, which was the approximate range of the glacier ice boulder impacts. Experimental oblique impacts of ice projectiles on a viscous target produce inclined conical cavities that are elliptical when viewed from above. Why do Carolina Bays have uplifted rims? Impact cratering displaces material laterally by horizontal compressive forces and ejects debris ballistically to produce stratigraphically uplifted rims around the cavity. On February 15, 2013, a meteor streaked over the city of Chelyabinsk, Russia, with a population of 1.1 million. The meteor left a thick trail and exploded in the atmosphere with a bright flash at an altitude of about 29.7 kilometers. The shockwave of the explosion damaged buildings and shattered windows throughout the city. More than 1,000 people were injured by flying glass. The meteor was estimated to have a diameter of 17 meters and an explosive force of 500 kilotons. The airburst from the explosion did not create any Carolina Bays or any Aeolian basins. However, pieces of the bolide form penetration funnels in the snow. The image on the inset shows a penetration funnel whose sides were compressed into denser snow by the passage of the meteorite fragment. The researchers removed the soft snow surrounding the penetration funnel to take this picture showing the meteorite piece at the apex of the conical crater. 
The Tunguska event was a massive series of explosions in Siberia, Russia on the morning of June 30, 1908. The explosions are attributed to the airburst of a stony meteoroid about 100 meters or 333 feet in size. The meteoroid is thought to have disintegrated at an altitude of 5 to 10 kilometers above the surface of the Earth with an energy equivalent to approximately 15 megatons of TNT. There is a link to a video about Tunguska that I made two years ago in the description below. The Russian Wikipedia page provides information about the research that has been done on the Tunguska event. The researchers used different methods to determine the location of the airburst, including the radial alignment of the trees, physical parameters, and other criteria. The web page provides the coordinates determined by the studies. The coordinates for the airburst differ substantially, but the area is covered with bogs and looks devastated even today. We will look in detail at the area highlighted by the rectangle. These are some of the lakes or scars that have been claimed to have been made by the Tunguska explosions, but some scientists think that those swampy depressions are actually subarctic Siberian thermokarst lakes with dates much older than the bolide explosion itself. I use web plot digitizer to plot the points along the perimeter of one feature. This provided me with a set of coordinates that I used to fit an ellipse using the least squares method. The digitization software provides an objective analysis. The shape of this Tunguska bog is definitely not elliptical and it does not resemble the Carolina Bay at all. The atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima had a yield of approximately 15 kilotons of TNT. It exploded at an altitude of about 580 meters or 1,900 feet above the surface. This is a lot closer to the ground than the Chelyabinsk airburst of 500 kilotons at an altitude of 29.7 kilometers. This airburst did not create craters. We have to ask, how close to the ground does an airburst have to be in order to produce a crater? If this powerful airburst cannot make craters, it seems that the hypothesis that the Carolina Bays were created by airbursts of any kind is definitely busted. Thus far, no Eolian process can guarantee the production of conic section features on the surface of the Earth. If anybody tells you that airbursts of 15 megatons like Tunguska can create elliptical geological features like the Carolina Bays, please challenge them. Do not let them proliferate this myth. Do not trust the hand-waving and technical gibberish. Ask for the coordinates of the purported feature, plot its perimeter, and fit an ellipse to the points by the least squares method. That is how science is done. We now have the technology to determine if airbursts, blowouts, or any Aeolian processes can create elliptical structures like the Carolina Bays. Let us use these tools to get to the truth. If you want to try modeling the effect of a Tunguska airburst, you can set up a bowl of dirt with some toothpicks to represent the trees. Hang a firecracker on top of the toothpicks and light the fuse. Wear goggles, earplugs, and protective clothing. Keep a safe distance from the explosion. You do not want to be impaled by a flying toothpick. You can repeat the experiment with a firecracker at different heights. Let us know if the airburst produced any depressions that would resemble Carolina Bays at all. Post your videos to YouTube with the hashtag Tunguska Experiment and share the links. Unfortunately, fireworks are prohibited where I live, otherwise I would try the experiment myself. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. I will continue to examine the mechanisms that form the Carolina Bays. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.